Let's get into the final um, learning objective for session number four, and that are some caveats regarding these financial planning models. Financial planning models don't always answer the, or ask or answer the right questions. You do the plan. Uh, you do the best you can. Put the most honest assumptions you can put in there. Uh, be careful also. Uh, some some uh, managers may try to lowball sales numbers on you, knowing that they want to beat their target so they get a higher performance bonus. So you have to try and sort that out as you build a relationship with some of the key operating managers you're going to work, be working with as you try to develop these uh, financial planning models. Uh, a lot of these are dependent on accounting relationships, not market value. So uh, you may be understating some things, overstating some things. You have to be careful of that. But basically, all you have is accounting numbers for the most part, and you're going to build your forecast based on last year's accounting figures. So that's the best you have. So uh, build a good relationship with your accounting friends in your business. Uh, three basic elements um, of financial planning models, cash flow, size, risk, and timing tend to get left out a lot of times. Uh, financial planning models themselves don't produce output that gives you meaningful clues about strategies. So you have to develop strategies to do this, to, to hit the sales targets that you're going to uh, put into the model. This does, again, does not give you all the answers. It's an iterative process. Basically, at our large chemical company, we would put a, an initial forecast together. We would run upstairs to the um, CEO and CFO, and sometimes some of the other board of director members would sit in on it. And uh, if it was not sufficient growth, we could kick right down the stairs right away. They would say, insufficient, get out of the room. Uh, you know better than that. Um, sometimes we didn't. We were looking for the answer as to what kind of growth they were looking for. We didn't really get that answer until we iterated several times. Then when we hit the magic number, we knew we were good and the budget and the uh, forecast and the five-year plan was approved, but not until then. We found out at this large chemical company, 17% was kind of a target. In other words, don't go upstairs to the CEO's office without at least a 17% growth in sales. A lot of times the marketing managers would balk at that. They said, we, uh, we can't get blood out of a rock. We can't sell any more catalysts. It's hard to do. The market is tapped. Um, the economy is not that good this year. We're, we can't sell that much. Uh, nevertheless, the uh, CEO would say, we need higher growth rates. So they would push us to increase our sales, lower our costs, and thereby increase our profitability. And all this stuff uh, is all interrelated, the income statement interrelated with the balance sheet, related, both are related to the cash flow. We create the plan, examine the plan, iterate the plan, and finally get it approved, hopefully before the year end. On summary, we've uh, looked at five key learning objectives at the end of this session. You should be able to uh, know what a financial plan is and why we do financial planning in uh, most major businesses. Uh, you, that means for you, if you go into business someday, whether on your own or uh, working for a small, medium, large corporation, you're going to do financial planning as we've done in this session. Uh, financial planning models are uh, out there and there are uh, six key ingredients. So you should know the six key ingredients of a good, successful financial planning model in order. Um, and how you do it, economic assumptions first, sales forecast, um, income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. So you create your pro formas, your forecast for the next five years, asset requirements, financing requirements, and not, uh, last but not least, don't forget the plug, the plug external financing needed. Uh, you'll, you should know how to apply the percentage of sales approach and the growth approach that we used, one plus a growth rate. Uh, you should know how external financing impacts growth. You should know how to calculate the internal growth rate and the sustainable growth rate. And some of the caveats about these models, these models are iterative, uh, then they get approved, then we move on uh, into the next year, and then we try to hit those targets in terms of performance. Hopefully you've enjoyed the session on financial planning and growth.